What's up YouTube? Today we're going to take a look at lead code problem number 596. Classes more than five students. Mark that as easy. Let's get straight into it. So the problem statement is there's a table courses with columns student and class. Please list out all classes which have more than or equal to five students. For example, that table should give the output of math because student A, C, E, G, H and I takes math. That is six students. More than or equal to five, that's why it gets output. Biology is only taken by student D, so it doesn't get output just like the other courses. Easy enough, let's try to think of how to approach this problem. Funny enough, that's actually the exact same question that I use for data scientist interviews at the company I work at to see how people explain their approach and what kind of SQL keywords and techniques they know. So. As you can see, I just went through that example input and output and just counted the amount of people that take each course. Not for every course, but I could see that math was the only one that has more or equal to five. So approaching this problem, we want to count the number of students in each course or class and then filter based on that number to see which of these numbers is higher than five or equal to five. So that's what we're gonna do right here in our first approach. I'm gonna go through two different approaches, starting with the one I'm explaining right now and then changing upon it. So we want to select the class and then count the number of students in that class for each class. So we're gonna select these two from our table courses and in order to count the number of students per class we need to group by class. So let's see where this takes us by running this query. We get an output of math 6, English 1, biology 1, computer 1 and that is the count for each of these classes. Now I do have some follow-up questions for this problem. One of them being, what if we have duplicates in the table? What if one student's entry is in there twice? So we have A math, then A math again. So maybe that's been an, a mistake in the database and we can solve that by using count distinct. Maybe we should add that right here already. It's not gonna change anything for this example, but that is always good to keep in mind because we might have that problem in the future and it might be asked as a follow-up question by the interviewer. So we have our table with the class account. Let's give it a name as C for counter. And we have that information. And as we said, we want to use that to check for courses or classes that have five or more students. So we're just gonna check that counter. And in order to use that counter as a filter condition, we need to transform our statement to a subquery. So we're just gonna put brackets around it and give it a name as a new tempo called temp for temporary. And we can think of that table as a table just like courses that we can query from and that has the rows which are in the output right now. So we have our courses and their count. And now what we want to do is select class because that is the only field we should output from that temporary table called temp and introducing our filter condition of C, our counter being greater or equal to five. So running that query already gives us the correct result and I think it's a great way of going through the problem and explaining your approach and it does make sense logically because that is pretty much the same exact thing we did when we went through the problem statement. We just checked for classes that have more than five students by just counting the number of rows per class. Now there is a better way of doing that, introducing another SQL keyword and we're able to remove that subquery. So what I usually do in the interview, I ask, is there a way to solve this question without using a subquery as we did right now? I also asked for duplicates, which we solved by using the distinct keyword and there is a way of solving that using the having keyword and let's get to that approach right now. So having is a keyword which allows you to filter on aggregate functions. 
usually you're only able to filter on static fields like class or student and that's why we needed to introduce a subquery here because we can't both count the number of students and already filter on that because we didn't perform that count yet. We first needed to count and then use the table and query from that table again. But there is a way to do it in one step using the count keyword and in order to do that we're going to remove the statements outside the subquery and we do have our subquery again. And what we can do is we can just use that filter condition in the having clause because there we're able to filter on aggregate functions. So we're still going to use count distinct students to remove duplicates and count the number of students and that should be greater or equal to 5. And believe it or not, that is already the entire statement. We were just able to put that entire query we just had right now into four rows by using the having keyword and it basically does the same thing of performing that count aggregate function and calculation. It counts the number of students per class and then checks whether that value is greater or equal to 5. We still need to have a group by in here for the query to know which field to count on, in this case class. And that is already the entire query. So having allows us to filter on aggregate functions. As I said, we don't need to create that subquery and are able to write that down. As that, we're using a new SQL keyword. It's a great way of finding out whether an interviewee knows that keyword and is able to use it to write an elegant query just like this one. And I think it's also a great way to improve upon a solution you had before. And having is used a lot in other problems as well. You can check the duplicate email problem I also discussed on this channel which has a very similar solution and it's pretty much always used when you're filtering on a count and average. So some sort of condition that is not on a static field but some kind of aggregate function already. That's been pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys learned something new and know how to use having now. I did have some trouble understanding why I can't use that in my where condition that I can only filter on aggregate functions when I use having and I do need that group by but I hope it does become clear for you after a while. You can use both solutions but as I said I use that question to filter out candidates and see which of them know having and which don't. So I hope I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm going to go through all lead code database problems, starting with the easy ones and the ones that are available for free so everyone can follow along. And if you do want to follow along, just hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.